Hey there, and thank you for tuning in to the third episode of YQG and Bloom. My name is Tracy Martins, and I'm your host. And today I'm at Auntie Aldo's Kitchen in Cottom with the owner, Alexandria Amber. Hey there, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm good. Now, I have to say, just really quickly, you might hear a little humming in the background because we have a ton of fridges and freezers <laughs> that are keeping all the yummies nice and cold for us. I really appreciate you coming in on your night off. No problem. Happy to be here. Thank you. Now, I've looked at this woman's website, Auntie Aldo's Kitchen. Is it .com? Yep. And it is so user-friendly. I, I, I don't know why I went nuts over your About Us page. Usually when you go onto a website and there's an About Us page, it's just the contact information. Mm -hmm. You go into great detail. And it's awesome. I get the question a lot where my name comes from and, and, and all that. So I figured I, I should probably emphasize on the website, I like to keep it real on all my social media too. So I kind of try to keep it real in my About Me uh, page as well. Well, I appreciate it. And for <laughs> any of the viewers that have not read anything or know where your name comes from, how'd you get it? Okay. So I have seven nieces and nephews. And um, they couldn't pronounce Auntie Alex when they were born. Mm -hmm. So the youngest would say Auntie Aldu. And at the time, everyone in my family, my sisters and that thought it was so funny. So then, you know, <laughs> further down the line, all of them started saying it. My family started saying it. My friends started saying it. I opened up a business <laughs> and I called it Auntie Aldu's. And um, I got too busy, too busy, too big, too quick. And I didn't want to change it. Because, I mean, it's too late now. But <laughs> it's stuck. Now everybody's Auntie Aldo, so you are. <laughs> it works for me. <laughs> now, I only know you from the downtown farmer's market, the downtown Windsor farmer's market. Although I did see her online. I've been following you on Instagram a couple of years now, I think. How long have you been in business? So, I've technically been in business since 2013. Mm hmm I've been uh, going to the market so I, uh, since 2018. Um, so I usually say 2018 is when I really started because that's when I went all in. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, 2013 is when I did start, though. But so. I'm sure that most people on Instagram or Facebook have seen the Pop-Tarts. Yes. You are known for the Pop-Tarts. So when I went to the downtown Windsor Farmer's Market... I had to get one, but of course, we also got the savory pies, which we were a little late getting here tonight because my husband and I had <laughs> the nice vegan pot pies. I think I had the vegan uh, tortilla and you had the creamy lentil. The creamy lentil. <laughs> it was amazing. You've expanded from the Pop-Tarts and from your savory pies. You have a little bit of everything going on here. I do. So I actually started off doing savory pies mm. and fruit pies. And uh, savory pies was my thing for a while. I would wholesale different companies like Littlefoot Foods and uh, the Cheese Bar and that. And, and I, would, I was doing really well with uh, my savory pies. People still come to me knowing to come to me for my vegan ones and my non-vegan pies. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I started doing. But in 2020, um, I was celebrating um, my, um, I, ha I went to um, Banna for an eating disorder. And I thought, what a great way to celebrate eating, or eating disorder awareness week by creating something that I was restricting myself of, which was Pop-Tarts. <laughs> uh, it was really trendy and things like that. I had gone on vacation in 2020, which is me and my husband and um, and I had a pop tart, and I thought, like, why have I been denying myself this for so long? I was still going through my treatment and that mm -hmm. uh, for my eating disorder, and then I thought, you know, I'm gonna make pop tarts for Auntie Eldus and see if people really like them, and it just totally blew up. Yeah. In 2020, I was selling uh, thousands of them uh, at the market, and they started wholesaling some of them all around, and then eventually, here we are today. There's still a staple in what I make. Mm -hmm. uh, I do make a tons of other things as well, uh, cookies and all sorts of pies and pastries. And you're also offering uh, drink mixes as well. Yeah, so opening up the coffee shop, I've been able to play with um, creating my own hot chocolate mixes just so that we get a good idea of what's inside of it so we can kind of avoid dairy and any allergens. We can avoid uh, any any kind of harmful substances people use to to preserve things. Mm -hmm. I, I try to avoid that. So I've been creating turmeric latte mixes because our turmeric latte has been such a hit in store. 
Um, so I made the mix uh, as per request of some customers. So, and that also has been going very well. So, she still does a ton of markets. I mean, like, do you actually ever get days off? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> markets. Uh, <laughs> this is technically not even a day off here. Uh, I do a lot of prep um, beginning of the week. Um, I usually take off half a Monday to sleep in, and then I kind of make my way back to the shop. But markets, uh, markets are, I love doing markets. Mm. Um, markets are my thing. I started doing the downtown Windsor Farmers Market. That's that's where I began my growth as mm-hmm. a as a business. And um, and I'm going. I stick there. That's my place. And I go to other ones as well because it's I like it. It's familiar yeah. to me. And then in the last year, you have opened an actual coffee shop slash bakery yes. slash kitchen in it's beautiful anything that you see on the walls are for sale from local artisans Mm -hmm. and she has the greeting cards and she has some uh, clothing merchandise so if you need any last minute christmas presents or pastries get your butt down here Yes, because it's awesome. Bit of everything you have a lot of workshops that are going on here on the off times. I do. So I just started up my workshop. So now that I've been in here a year, mm-hmm. I thought you know, now's the time. Jump in. I, I used to run classes um, just before COVID for Sobies. I would do baking classes, uh, intro to veganism. Um, I had to make focaccia bread, like different different intro classes uh, in regards to baking and cooking. Mm-hmm. And I really couldn't wait to bring it into my space. I had a lot of. Um, OG customers coming to me like, you know, I took the apple pie class and I really want to take it again. So I'm like, okay, here we go. Let's and do it. It's off season. Let's let's make some time to have fun. I know I am going to definitely hit your pastry the, <laughs> or the pie dough mm. class that you're going to have because that is the one thing that terrifies me is to, <laughs> <laughs> to make a dough. Although if you really aren't that good at it, you do sell some frozen ones. I do. Yes. Just the pie shells. Absolutely. Alex here really supports other small businesses as well as her own. A lot of the products that are here on the wall are from other customers or other, I should say, business owners. Mm -hmm. She also uh, sells some food from the Vegan Gardener. She has other classes, like you had a book reading last night. What is the clothing one that's coming up? Uh, the clothing swap was inspired by Greener Farms. Uh, Allie from from Greener Farms, she did a clothing swap at the Cheese Bar, and I thought, you know what, that's a beautiful idea. Um, and I think that that there, I have a huge community and a huge following that loves that kind of um, atmosphere and that kind of activity to do. And I thought, what a great thing to do just before Christmas. Um, exchanging different uh, clothing, like because I know I donate a lot of stuff before mm-hmm. Christmas and or just after Christmas to make room for new that sort of thing. Um, but I, I just thought, what a great uh, networking and social event this could be, and also super fun, like a whole new wardrobe for nothing. That's a great. Idea. And so you I do would. have to bring clothes in. You do, yes. <laughs> so it's required to. You can bring up to fifteen articles of clothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's two dollar entry. Um, you can leave your clothing here, but you have to take clothing with you. Okay. You have to swap. If you absolutely can't find something, that's okay. I just don't want people coming with um, their entire wardrobe and dropping it with me and then me <laughs> having to go find different places to donate, which is fine. I, I intend on doing it, but mm-hmm. I don't want to be left with an entire Valley Village worth of clothes. Yes. Um, I'm hoping to have an actual swap happening. And what dates are those? It is December 16th and 17th. Friday and Saturday. So that's just coming up Mm -hmm. next week. Next week, yes. So since 2018, you have been doing a lot of pop-up shops and markets, and I've seen your food in a lot of the smaller grocery stores in the Windsor-Essex County area, such as DeMarco Markets. You've opened this store, or I shouldn't say store, you've opened this bakery in the last year. It's been here for a year. How do you find business has been? It's definitely a challenge. I think um, I have a great customer base and I'm being very supported by the community I'm in now. Mm -hmm. I have slowed down my wholesales uh, significantly um, from what I used to do because it was predominantly wholesaling when I was um, Mm -hmm. working out of ghost kitchens. Um, Now uh, it's... I do so many markets and markets is where I'm I'm getting most of my income from. The, The shop itself... Um, has been very steady with the new um, 
changes that are being made. Mm -hmm. Me adapting and, and pivoting to doing more things to be accessible for other people instead of just, no one's going to want just pies and pastries. Yeah. You know, I, I, I wanted this to be a space for more anyway. I wanted this to be a comfortable coffee shop. I wanted this place to be a, a great networking place. And, and it's slowly building to that. So really, I'm, I'm, I'm on the rise for sure. Um, okay. This place is doing great. Um, it's still not where I want it to be. But I mean, that business is growth. I, I'm, I'm, I hope I'm not where I want to be yet. I, w- I want to be able to grow still. So oh, And continue so, to. And on the right track, I think. Now, I know that having the brick and mortar store, like you said, it, it, you are having growth and you're bringing in new products and you're bringing in other small business or crafters, small business owners, and they're having their stuff in your shop. Everybody in the YQG, Windsor, Essex County area is huge on the shop local, shop local. Do you find that they actually are? Oh, this is a good, there's a load of question, Tracy. It, it really is. <laughs> um, bit, I know they are to an extent, but are they as much as what it seems like when you look on social media? My honest answer is mm-hmm. yes. I do think that Windsor Essex is predominantly supportive of local businesses. I think we make up most of, like we're made up of mostly local businesses mm-hmm. and small businesses. Do I think that there is enough going towards small businesses? No, I don't. I think that it's not uh, sustainable for me to say only support local because we're going to have to do what we need to do to survive. Oh, for let's, sure. Let's be real. I still shop at Amazon. I'm still at Walmart sometimes. Oh, I was at Costco yesterday. You know? Right. It happens. But yeah. that's not, you know, it doesn't have to be everything shopping at those stores. Mm-hmm. Um, I think making time and effort to go to other local coffee shops, to go to um, local stores like uh, Talbot 46, um, to Whiskey Jack, to like uh, Wolf and Rebel, those small um, yeah. stores to pick up gifts and things like that. That is can also be done more. Um, I think that even local restaurants and bars are not getting as much love as, as needed because it's it's hard to, when you're competing with markets with pricing, that doesn't really match everyone's affordability. So. Oh, for sure. And, and that's why I brought it up is because I wanted to start this YouTube channel podcast to really showcase small businesses in this area. But I found that when I thought of myself, I was kind of hypocritical where I was one of the ones that is shop local, shop local as I'm walking into Walmart, (laughs) (laughs) you know? So I've really had to reevaluate this and I'm I'm glad that I have. I'm really glad that I started this. I've started following a lot more small businesses and going to markets. People talk about being able to uh, afford locally made products and handcrafts and handmade pastries and that. I was actually surprised at the LaSalle Night Market finding some things that were cheaper than in the stores. Mm -hmm. I I think when we budget for it, it can be very affordable. I -hmm. think that we're so used to doing something a certain way. Mm -hmm. We're so used to the prices at Tim Hortons. We're so used to the prices at Starbucks. We're so used to Walmart and so on and so forth. It's really hard to make changes um, based on quality and, and quantity that you will find at local small businesses. Mm-hmm. So I think um, just making that effort to to go out to small businesses and do your research and, and check it out and wh- who are you buying? Why, what are you buying? Knowing that you're putting money into the pockets of your community, mm-hmm. which is going to be staying in your community as opposed to somebody who's Going so high up and so they can buy another Ferrari. You know, yes. it's not... Exactly. It's not the same. And I mean, quite honestly, if we're willing to spend six, seven dollars for a latte Mm -hmm. at another store, why not do it here where we know what is in the syrups, what is in the beverages? And that's what I I was telling people about your savory meat pies. And it's like they're actually huge. (laughs) I I can have one of those other store bought ones and I can eat two of them and just big and (laughs) Yeah, you can eat two of them and an hour later I'm munching on the chips. And this one, right before we came here. I didn't even finish it. I'm like, I, I, I have commitment. to stop. <laughs> but it's nice to be able to read the labels and to know you know everything that's in there. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not sure of something, there's the owner. I can actually ask them. And yeah. 
and find out. I take a lot of pride in that. I take a lot of pride in saying, like, I can walk five minutes up the street and get her garlic. I I take a lot of pride in knowing that when I buy beef, it's from the cow that was living, you know, (laughs) five minutes from here. You know what I mean? It's, I... I love being able to support my community and, and keep it within the community, even though it's in my small business, because it stays all together. I like that. I like that you find unique products. <laughs> I was able to get a lot of Christmas presents this year that they're not going to get from other family members or friends because you can't buy them in stores. They <laughs> bought them locally, bought them either through people that I've met online or through markets. It's Definitely something that I think we need to look into more. And I'm hoping as I grow YQG in bloom and I make it across various markets and I become more well-known, I'm able to put a spotlight on our local vendors and our local markets, our local crafters, because Windsor, Essex County has so much to offer and a lot of really talented people. (laughs) I think it's really nice if people could come out maybe to even see me Hmm. and have it be more accessible to buy local people's products. So they don't have to drive to Windsor to get Littlefoot Foods pierogies or drive to to, to, uh, Ford City to get Vegan Gardener's uh, vegan options. Um, or Mary's Bake Shop in LaSalle, they can just, if they're out this way, they can come to me to pick up her good, her gluten-free goodies. Um, I have a little bit for everybody here, and it's a little bit from all over our community. But the great thing is, is it goes both ways. They sell your stuff as well. Mm-hmm. And Cottom is such a lovely little town. It's in between Essex and Kingsville. So I accidentally found this place. I had wanted to come to this place but I hadn't made it out here and I wasn't sure where it was. And I was going from Essex into it's Kingsville. A on the map. <laughs> it, I swear to goodness, I was driving down the street and all of a sudden I'm like, there it is. And I did a U turn and I came back. And I've been here a few times and now I'm interviewing her. And I'm really hoping to have some people come on out here and have a hot chocolate or one of those golden lattes Mm -hmm. and definitely try a Pop-Tart, one of your savory pies, soups, Mm -hmm. sandwiches, Sandwiches. have a little bit of everything. Yep. Well, thank you so much, Alex. I really appreciate you being here today. Thank you for having me. And definitely you have to come out here to Auntie Aldo's Kitchen. And what is your address? Uh, 123, and that's not a made up address. It's 123 County Road 34 West. Again, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of YQG and Bloom. My name is Tracy Martins, and I will see you next week with another local artisan.